Why do Christians die? Christians die because of the consciousness of death. Read your Bible. Why did the apostles die? Because the Bible says they had the sentence of death in themselves. Don't forget it. They carried in them the consciousness of death. Why? The apostle Paul said, we carry that consciousness. We have given ourselves over to death that you may live. They thought we would live until the rapture. By their sacrifice. They sentenced themselves to death. Hoping that we will catch the dream. And live on. I said, uh, uh, you know, I'm just talking to you. you know. But everything I'm telling you, these are all from the scriptures. I could just read to you. Just read and read and read. So death is based on a consciousness. And think of this. Men lived 900 years plus. It kept reducing as sin increased. Until God put a cap on it and said 120 years. Then that went on until Moses lamented. Seeing them dying before they could even hit 120. He said 70 or 80 and they're gone. It was a lamentation. It wasn't a promise. It was Moses' lamentation. In Psalm 90. So Moses wrote that Psalm, not David. And Moses lived 120 years. Then, the Bible says it was because of sin that God put a cap on man's life for 120 but God sent Jesus to save man from sin. So if the problem of sin has been dealt with, no why do you still have the cap? Yes. No. You see, are you saying we can live on? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. This is the reality. But until the church understands this, and walks in the light of it and sees death as defeated. The Bible says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Not shall be defeated. It's been defeated, but it shall be destroyed. There's a difference between the two. Death has been defeated, but it shall be destroyed. Once we have a clear understanding, remember, he came to deliver those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage because of what? The fear of death. The fear of death is what makes men to tremble and to refuse to do what they should do. Fear of death. But Jesus delivered his people from the fear of death completely. So we are no longer under the fear of death. Hallelujah. Remember, the Bible says that those who have come to Jesus, who believe in Jesus, have passed, have passed from death to life. Not shall pass. It's not a promise. He says they have passed from death to life. Physical death is the result of spiritual death. If there is no spiritual death in you, there ought not to be physical death in you. Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. This one thing I received from my father. He gave me power to lay my life down. He says, no man taketh it from me. I lay down of my own self and I have power to take it up again. Remember Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, the, the word of God is so important. And um, faith can only be built by the word. 
If you're not studying the word of God, if you're not listening to the word, if you're not meditating on the word, your faith cannot grow. That's a, that's a reality. Your faith cannot grow. Faith only comes from God's word. And, and, and the word is food for the human spirit. If you don't build your spirit strong, your spirit will be weak. And at anything in life, you'll be thrown over. You'll be weak. Your response will be weak. But if you have the word of God in your spirit, you rise to the occasion. No matter what, you rise to the occasion. You'd know the greater one lives in you. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. This reminds me, I was, I was informed about a, a question that somebody asked on uh, Chronicles of Prophecy. I hope I'm, I'm getting it right. They said it had to do with a, a question on when you pray in tongues uh, and in your mind. Uh, whether do you just allow your mind to think of nothing or do you what do you do with your mind when you're praying in other tongues I think that's what that, I think that's what the question was well except if uh, those communicating that um, interpreted it to be so but um, it's it's very easy I'll explain that to you Two things to understand firstly when you read in Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 the Bible says something that's important it says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself help make it in a session for us with groanings which cannot be uttered now this is the spirit praying through the Christian praying through the saint this is a different kind of prayer this is not the same thing as speaking in tongues all right this is says the spirit makes in a session for us with groanings deep sighs which cannot be ordered they cannot be ordered now, I know some try to stretch this to mean uttered in articulate speech. No, this means which cannot be uttered. It's very clear. And um, uh, when we speak in tongues, the Bible says we are given utterance by the Holy Ghost. You see? And that is not in articulate speech either. <laughs> okay. So, let's, let's look at it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we are. But the Spirit itself, remember it's Himself, make it in the session for us with groanings which cannot be ordered. Look at verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts, so is that God Almighty, God the Father. He that searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Now I want you to take mind of the Spirit. Which Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Because He make it in the session for the saints. The Holy Spirit makes in the session for the saints according to the will of God. Look at the next verse. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them, the love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. Meaning that that prayer is sure to be answered and it will lead to something wonderful for the saints. Okay, so the important things to understand from this place here is that this is a spirit inspired prayer the holy ghost inspired this praying he was not the man okay but he did it through the man okay so or to the saint to that saint of god that christian who was praying the holy spirit caused him to have these deep sighs and to have these groanings sometimes it happens to you you just you're praying and then you suddenly you're crying and you don't know you don't even know why you're crying they come out like crying and groaning and all of that deep from within you so that is the holy spirit making that kind of praying to happen through you 
Now, what the Bible says is God knows what is in the mind of the Holy Ghost. What the Holy Ghost is thinking. What the Holy Ghost is causing you to pray about or at least praying through you. You don't know what he's dealing with. But God knows what is in the mind of the Holy Ghost. Oh, so the Holy Ghost has a mind. Of course he does. <laughs> Doesn't Jesus have a mind? Don't forget that the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. He has a mind. God thinks. Where do you think? In your mind. Okay. Now, having understood that, I want you to look at another portion, and that is 1 Corinthians chapter 14 from verse number 13. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Now, notice this is in speaking in tongues. This is not the same thing as groanings that we read in Romans chapter 8. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Oh, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. Now, did you notice it didn't say the Holy Ghost prayeth? In Romans chapter 8, the Holy Ghost was praying because the Bible says the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, in this place, it says my spirit, not the Holy Ghost. So when I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. But my understanding is unfruitful. In other words, my mind doesn't know what my spirit is praying about. He doesn't know. My mind doesn't know. My understanding is unfruitful. I don't know what I'm saying. Why? Because it's coming out in tongues, an unknown tongue. All right, so I'll read again. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. And I'll pray with the understanding also. So when it says I'll pray with the spirit, that's with my spirit. And pray with my spirit. He already told me in the previous verse that when I pray in an unknown tongue, that's my spirit praying. So if I want to pray in the spirit or with the spirit, I pray in tongues, in an unknown tongue, the spirit's tongue. So I'll pray with the spirit and I'll pray with the understanding also. Now when I pray with the understanding, that means in the language that I understand, and that means a known tongue. So there's a difference between the unknown tongue and the known tongue. The unknown tongue is praying with my spirit and the known tongue is praying through my mind because I know what I'm saying. All right, now look at this. I was saying with the spirit and I was saying with the understanding also. But there's more to understand about this thing. Let's go further. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupy the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? Oh, that means here now, he's talking about praying in public. That means in the presence of another or others. So he goes on to let me know that when I pray like this, I need to have an interpretation for them to be able to say amen. But if I'm praying on my own, I may want to, I may not want to. I don't have anybody that must need to know what I'm praying about. You see it? So in public when I pray in other tongues, he says it is important that I interpret or pray in my understanding so that they can say amen. Because if I just pray in tongues and I stop, how are you going to know when to say amen? Or even what it is? Whether to even say amen. So many times when sometimes our leaders... Maybe they're praying and leading in prayer and they pray in tongues. Then after praying in tongues for some time, they go, they pray in, in, the, uh, in English language or in a, in a language that you understand and they understand and conclude so you can say amen at the giving of thanks. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Now, what are you supposed to observe here is the fact that in your praying in tongues, there is also your mind. But your mind doesn't know what your spirit says. Your mind doesn't know what your spirit says. 
but your spirit knows what your mind thinks. As the Holy Spirit has a mind, and God the Father knows what is in the mind of the Spirit. So God also knows what is in the mind of this human spirit. He knows what is in your mind. He knows what's in your mind. Now, what's the difference here? When I want to pray for something that's on my mind, I may begin speaking in tongues, and sometimes I don't know how to form the words, especially sometimes there are those who have, the, they, they just speak um, some limited spiritual vocabulary. Okay? They're limited. And they pray that way for years. Then they go, that's about all. And then they just repeat and recycle it. Okay? Well, but that's because they don't really let themselves flow more because it's a language. You can speak a whole lot more. But if God were just listening to just those words from you, they will mean the same thing every time. So what does God do? He does exactly what he does when the Holy Spirit is making groanings because those groanings are not the language. So what does God do? Because you see, the most that you can do for, with the Holy Ghost at that time is to have these groanings. They come out like groanings and cries and deep sighs. So God looks at what's on your mind. What's on the mind of the Holy Ghost that's making those groanings, causing you to make those groanings. He looks at what's on the mind of the Holy Ghost. And he says, he knows what's there. It's about interceding for the saints according to the will of God. So also when you're praying in tongues, and you have this limited, limited speaking in tongues, God's not just looking at that. He's looking at what's on your mind. What's on your mind. And that's why you cannot afford to let your mind just be doing nothing when you're speaking in tongues. Otherwise, you're only going to get a part of it. There's a part of it, which is a blessing. When you're speaking in tongues, the Bible says your spirit is edified. So even if your mind has no understanding and you're not thinking about anything in your mind and you're just walking and you're just driving and speaking in tongues, you will still be blessed. You see it? But that's been edified. But you see, but sometimes there's something on your mind for which reason you're speaking in tongues. There's something on your mind. And so God is looking at what is on your mind. What is on your mind? And so the Holy Ghost then gives you the right utterance. You find that apart from speaking in those tongues that you might be used to, sometimes every now and then there's a new outburst. Yes, and then if you let him, if you let him, he will cause you to have the incantations, the spiritual codes that are necessary. Or else he will cause an inspiration that brings you what? A prophecy. And then you prophesy those words that are consistent with that thing that you've been having in your mind to bring you the answer. So you see, your mind is so important to God. Glory to God. So I hope you, all, you, you, you got the answer. Uh, and uh, you're watching Chronicles of Prophecy. Glory to 